Hello lovely people, how are you all today? I hope you're well. I'm quite warm, as you can see. I've been carrying on today since when you saw the tour video, which I was going to apologise for it being so long. It's as long as it was, details about what's going on and the excitement of seeing new baby plants. Anyway, I'm carrying on and it's always one of those curious days in the year when it's really warm and muggy again. I mean, it's not boiling hot. It's not like the heat wave folk have been having over in North America, but it is warm and it's muggy again, so humid. So it feels really odd that I'm planting the winter garden today. Well, beginning to plant the winter garden today. Um, we'll, we'll go out there in a minute. We'll just, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you with the Cavallo Nero. I'm going to show you my whole setup in terms of netting because people often ask about it and it's one of those things I sort of almost take it for granted now because I've been doing it for a while. So I'm going to go through the details of the whole sort of protection scheme I use. Um, <clears throat> off camera I've already planted out all of the red curly kale in the X broad bean bed started cracking into the Cavallo Nero, which we're going to go and finish now. <clears throat> um, so I did mess that off camera because what a lovely day. Uh, there have been folk around, it's been quite busy, a bit hard to film in terms of making sure I don't film anyone that's shy and doesn't want to be on camera, but also just because of all the chit chat that's been going on. My neighbour immediately outside the shed where all the poppies have been has returned today after quite an absence. He's cleared that bed. Really, really good to see him back. It's one of the joys of gardening like this, isn't it? We we all become friends and then when someone's not around for a while, we miss them. So it's been an absolute joy to see a number of people, people I haven't seen for ages, and just this lovely sound of chatter around the site. Now though, I think everyone's gone in for lunch, siestas, what have you, what have you, so it's nice and quiet, it's really quiet out there. So without further ado, on a really muggy day that I'm not dressed for, I've got long trousers on, let's go and finish off planting the Cavallo Nero. Talk about mulch. Oh, never mind talking about it in the shed, come on, let's get into the garden. In this bed, I'm just finishing up planting my Cavallo Nero, uh, which for anyone who's new to growing or new to my garden, it's a type of kale, but its leaves are much, they're sort of long and thin, rather than this sort of big bushy kale type leaf that I guess most of us are more familiar with. I absolutely adore this plant. I do it because it tastes gorgeous, but one of the big reasons for adoring it is because it's a cut and come type veg. In other words, I can harvest a few leaves, one or two leaves from each plant from the outside and it just keeps growing and producing more leaves from the centre, rather like my celery, my chard, I'm trying to think of other things celery and chard, well that will do. Um, I like to have these cut and come again veg because for a relatively small space, now I know folk think my garden is huge, but for food for a whole year, it's actually not that big a space. I'm gonna cover size of bed space, etc. in another video. Um, it is booked as a video to do because I know it's something, all these questions that are often asked I'm going to cover it anyway so yeah for a garden for growing food for a whole year it's not that big a space so anything that I can sort of do repeat harvests from brilliant so not only not only is it cut and come again but because it's got a much much sort of taller thinner aspect I can get more plants into the bed. So these are only spaced about, they're about a foot apart. 
sorry, I should have said just into, oh, I feel sneezy, just in terms of bed prep. This was the garlic bed. Um, I got the garlic out a couple of weeks ago before we started having all that rain. And in getting them out, it sort of broke up the soil a little bit. Uh, didn't dig, just forked them out. Then we've had all that rain, masses and masses of rain. So I gave it a quick sprinkle of some garlic, manure, garlic, chicken manure pellets because this bed uh, has been in action now for over a year already. Last year it had the main crop potatoes in, they've jumped to bed. When they came out, so they last year they went in about April, April 2020. By October 2020 the garlic went in, that's just come out. So yeah, I've given it a top dressing of the garlic manure pellets. Garlic manure, what am I saying? Chicken manure, that, that sun's getting to me. Um, just to give it a bit of a feed. With all that rain, that's helped to melt them. And then literally all I've done is I've come along with my rake and sort of bashed the worst of the lumps down. So it's still, it's quite a lumpy, bumpy bed, but <clears throat> that's fine for these plants. They're not fast. It's not like, you know, planting seeds that need a really fine tilth. I think, I can't remember if I mentioned it in the previous video about the fact that these are the, the prickings that I only pricked them out. I had worked this out, I think it's two weeks and two days ago. And I was a bit concerned that it might be a bit early in terms of their root formation. But, can you see that? They're full of little teeny tiny white roots spreading out great not a massive root so i'm being quite careful to keep this all together but enough and then when it comes to planting i'm planting quite deep so for example let's look at this one in the pot when it comes to planting i'm planting it a good inch or so deeper right up to this kind of where these leaves start just to help really secure it so it's planted a bit deeper and then I'm sure as most folk know, with all of our brassicas, they need a really, really firm anchoring. This little sparrow has been flitting up and down all day. It's adorable. I wish I could... Did you hear its little wings beating? Um, I wish I could get a shot. Yeah, they want to be really, really firmly anchored. Brassicas, if there's one thing they hate, it's being rocked around in the wind. These won't get huge in terms of height, maybe a couple of feet tall, but my purple sprouting broccoli, which will follow on after the salad potatoes out, um, they can get up to sort of four feet tall. And because they also, the purple sprouting broccoli, get really top heavy, um, I always stake each of those plants individually they'll all get a really really rigid pole to be tied to just help them stay upright uh, the cavolo narrow don't need it famous last words so yeah that's the soil prep for them a little bit about the plant nice roots plant it deeper these ones i've just planted these last three sitting down on the back side I'll stand up in a second, I'll come back along and I'll really push firm them in because then I can use all of my weight to get them firmed in. If you think you've firmed them in enough, firm them in again. Whew. Crikey, it is warm. Now, the ground is really moist. Hopefully you can see that it's picking up on camera, isn't it? It is moist. Even so, I'm going to give each plant a bit of a drink, help it settle in and then I'm going to mulch the whole bed before I net it and like I always say there's no point mulching ground that's bone dry I mean this isn't bone dry if if I was planting and this it was a really bone dry bed I'd give all the plants a drink anyway to settle them in but I'd also give the whole bed a really good soaking and then whack that mulch on the top so it's time to go and get the mulch other end of the garden 
for mulch. I'm going to use the contents of my square compost bin as opposed to the Dalek. The Dalek is nearly full again and needs turning. This square one has been full to the brim back in beginning of May with all the ex brassica material. There was masses. It was absolutely chock block full. It went down to about half. I filled it again. It's had a lot of stuff added. But, oh, can I, can I get it all? Come on, Gertrude. Yeah, it's had a lot of stuff added, but not a lot of time to compost. So, I'm pretty sure that there'll be a lot of matter in here that's, that's barely gone down. Oh, lordy. Uh, but you know what, for mulch, I don't care. Last year I did the same technique and as we saw this spring, all of that matter had disappeared. Right. Just get stuck in, Billy. I'll show you how it looks once we're down by the beds. And I've... Oh, it's really nice. <clears throat> I've tried to keep it moist. Um, wow, it's really moist in the middle. Maybe I've kept it too moist. Ah, one can never get it quite right. I haven't turned this pile at all and it could have done with it, but I had no space because the other bin was filling up. Don't matter. Like I said, as mulch, I don't care. It'll go on, it'll help. Lumps of cardboard, everything. Lumps of cardboard which are bone dry. Yeah, I really, I really ought to have turned it. Never mind. Okay. First barrel, that'll do. Oh, I think I'm down to some lavender stalks. Right, let's go and get this on the bed. Okay. I'm going to put this on and spread it around by hand rather than with my fork. Fork would be much easier, but because it's really quite lumpy in places uh, and because my plants are so little <laughs> I don't really want to just chuck it on there and um, and snap a plant after all the effort to rescue them so I'll get it on and then I'll I'll give you a closer look so you can you can see the sort of consistency that I'm talking about. And what I've done is I've taken half of that compost bin content, left the other half. So this, this is all I've got for this bed. That other half will be for the uh, red kale bed. Just so I know that I'm not gonna, you know, use it all here and then leave myself nothing of the bed. Oh la la. Yeah, barrow down that side in a second. Woo. <laughs> even with even with the clouds coming over, it's still mighty warm. Mmm, <laughs> yum, 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 yum. <laughs> right, let me get on and do this. Watching it is going to be a little bit boring otherwise. 
did you notice that I forgot to water first? <laughs> uh, just as I turned the camera off, I suddenly remembered. So I got on with watering. Now, this may not look beautiful. <laughs> like I said, it's there's a lot of it that is hardly composted down. Oh, it's teeming with life. It's hardly composted down. Other parts, it is better composted down. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Um, there will be goodness in this that will go into the soil when these lovely, gorgeous, yummy veggies come out next spring. The vast majority of this will have disappeared anyway. And anything that's left, the slightly more twiggy stuff, fine. I can sort of tickle it in a bit and help uh, help with this breaking up of my clay. So yeah, not particularly beautiful, but useful. It will do the job as a mulch. It will add a bit of nutrient to the ground. And later on, it's gonna help with me dealing with my lovely clay soil. Okay, so now that's done, it's time to move on to, let's go and talk about protection. So having worked so hard <laughs> to get these little tiny plants to this stage, both in terms of sowing and then rescuing them after they've been really had by the uh, slugs and snails, getting them pricked out, the last thing I want to do now is lose them all to any kind of pests. Ah, just to sound the subject of the mulch, I'm sure there are people thinking, oh, but all that mulch I've just put on, it's perfect hiding place for the slugs and snails. Well, you know what? Maybe it is. The fact is, whatever I do in my garden, I am going to have slugs and snails. So, that being said, I would rather mulch to try and preserve water, add nutrients, add that roughage to break up the clay as I was mentioning a minute ago so yeah I'm not going to leave ground bare especially um, a brassica bed because it's going to be open all winter working hard all winter okay protection let's have a word about protection we've got two main above ground enemies of brassicas below ground um, club root it's not something, oh, thank goodness, I've ever had an issue with. So I don't really know much about it to talk about it. So I'm not going to because <laughs> I don't want to say things that are wrong. If club root is an issue for you, there's all sorts of things you can do. Check that out yourself. My two main pests, aside from slugs and snails, are cabbage white butterflies they love to lay their eggs on brassicas, hence the name, cabbage white. Those little eggs hatch into little caterpillars. Those little caterpillars have a voracious appetite. I mean, they'll strip a bed overnight almost. So I'm gonna put nets on to stop the butterflies getting in to do their egg laying. The other pest almost everyone has an issue with is pigeons. Pigeons love brassicas. They'll peck, 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 and again, they can shred a whole bed overnight, it seems. So, I'm gonna put nets over them. Firstly, I need something to hang my nets on, I support my nets, as it were. And I've got this blue plastic piping. It's water piping. Um, you can buy it from any builders and merchants, or be like me and get it out of a skip. <laughs> Um, I'm so so glad of this because it's not cheap but it's gonna last for years and years and years and years and years fab obviously if you haven't got anything like this you could make um you can make a structure from bamboo lashing all your bamboo bits together but where you've got sort of the top bits any pokey up bits of your bamboo you might want to put say an old washing up bottle cap on the top something like that so it doesn't poke through your nets now nets um, I'm just thinking about other nets that I've got, like my ready-built hoops, apart from the shade netting, I only use EnviroMesh in the garden now, so I'm sure most of you are familiar with it. It's a really, really <laughs> fine, fine grade mesh, really fine. It's supposed to be fine enough to keep uh, cabbage 
not cabbage, carrot root fly out of carrots. It's supposed to be fine enough to stop allium leaf miners from attacking your leeks and garlic and onions, etc, etc. That's great. It, I mean, it's going to protect from everything, but it allows perfect amounts of light and rain through. The reason I've gone over completely to EnviroMesh, I used to have all sorts of other net years ago when I first started out. Some with sort of holes that big, some a bit bigger. I have stopped using any of that because that netting, those holes, they're a death trap for wildlife. Those holes, they're big enough for a bird to get its head through and stuck. They're big enough for hedgehogs. We don't actually have any hedgehogs on this site, unfortunately. But yeah, they're big enough for wildlife to, to get heads stuck through and not be able to get out. And then they twist and strangle themselves. Um, birds getting their feet tangled in them and eventually, you know, dying from starvation. And probably, do they have heart attacks, birds, from fear? Uh, panic in that situation I don't know but yeah literally anything other than EnviroMesh is an absolute no-no for me in my garden um, I, I just can't just can't bear the thought of turning up to the garden one day and finding a bird hanging upside down trapped by its feet dead in my netting for the sake of my cabbages or whatever so we've got our hoops great netting and then to hold the net into the ground, bricks, etc, etc. But I've also, my little goodie box, I've got a real assortment of these that I didn't clean very well when I took them out. These are fab little pegs. Someone was chucking these out, so I said, yeah, I'll have them. Um, you can see, obviously, it, that it, it drives right, say my hand is the soil, it drives right down into the soil. And do you see where it's got that slight lip? I'm just trying to see if you can see it. That, so, right, the net's here, coming over. The excess bit of net meet, meeting the soil, roll it up a bit and then phew, trap it down, holds it down absolutely brilliantly. What I love about these is obviously you use them over and over and over again. Uh, would I buy these if I didn't have them? Probably not, I'd probably make do with bricks. Um, to hold it, all the edges down. The great thing about these though, of course, is they take up a bit less space. So where I've, in between the beds where I've got my dirt paths, the dirt, dirt paths are quite narrow. If there's brick side to side as well, big trip hazard for clumsy girl. So yeah, these are great. So that's my protection. I better get on and get this lot protected, hadn't I? And then move over to the red kale to get that mulched and netted too. I think I might have to have a glass of water first though because it is a really, really sticky day. Yeah, water first. Short head, that's the one. Do it. Yeah. 
bricks for the ends. Bricks. Bricks, bricks. Bricks and chicks. Bricks on the ends, they're not in the way. So easy these pegs. So easy. And neat. Of course, they have to be neat. Maybe there. Maybe, maybe there. Phew, it feels like everything has taken forever today. Uh, but here we are. Glad, very glad to get this job done today. The first of the winter garden. Planted up, tucked in. I can't remember how many I planted in the end. What was it? Eight. Eight on either side. Two rows of eight. So... 16 cover and narrow. And you see what I mean about these um, peg things now? Let me show you here. It really can sort of clamp them down good and tidy. Uh, less, less trip hazard. The only thing is, on the other side, let me just take you through the bean arch. Um, I think I'm going to have to redo this middle one. Where the soil is really lumpy bumpy here, I'll give you a close up look, <clears throat> lumpy bumpy, I think it's, it's not quite secure into the ground, I think I've hit pockets of no soil. I like to have it in firmly, obviously apart from anything so that I avoid tripping, but also so that if the foxes come along and they try to bounce on all of this, then hopefully it'll uh, stand up to them a bit. So yeah, like I said about the bricks, I don't mind having the bricks on the end here because they're well away from the path and where my feet need to be. But you can imagine if I was holding all of this down with bricks and as will happen in the onion bed, there'll be two beds side by side with nets, more bricks. Yeah, I'd be highly likely to trip. Whew. And then just over here, I'm just being mindful, there's a few folk around still. It was that after lunch moment, folk have turned up again. The other one is down here. This has got the red kale in it and the broad bean seed saving. Can you see through to the kales? <laughs> Well, hopefully they'll get growing and you'll see them. Oh, and that thing I was mentioning about something to stop your canes poking through if you're using canes rather than the water piping. I have got a cane here. 
um, it's holding up the broad beans to keep them off the wet ground. It's just one of those um, prebiotic drink things. I don't normally drink these, but after I had that infection in January in my jaw, I ended up having two weeks of antibiotics, so I thought, yeah, not risking it. Let's put some pre pro bionics, whatever, down my gullet. Slight error. <laughs> this on the end is not red kale. This is Cove Tonchura. It's the other one that um, Paul gave me. He started from seed. I think, did he seed it in October? I'm not sure. Anyway, I shouldn't have put it on the end because it's already going to be a bit squished. Uh, never mind. I'll just raise the nets as it grows. Oh, happy days, good stuff. Oh, such a lovely sight, this green, isn't it? So we've got a couple of dried, quite humid, muggy days coming. And then we're going to have another uh, humdinger of a load of rain. Oh, happy Rouge Vifta Tomp. When I showed you them in the tour, they looked wilty and I thought they needed watering. I think it was just the heat this morning because they're all perky again now without me having to water. Scorchio. <sighs> I'm chuffed those two beds are done. Really happy. It's always, um, yeah, it's just always great putting plants into the ground, isn't it? And, uh, and that's some really, really good stuff for the winter if they all grow. Um, it's been a really long day. I just asked my neighbour what time it is. It's five o'clock. Oh my goodness. Yeah, things have definitely taken longer than I thought today. I've done a ton of other little jobs. Um, there's about a third of my list from today that I didn't manage to get done. So, for instance, the thinning, a little experiment with the parsnips and some a little bit more sowing, harvest the lemon balm. Anyway. I wasn't planning to have another garden day this week, but I think I will. I think I'd like to get on top of all of those little jobs um, because then we do, we do another tranche of rain. So that's great. If I can get all those little jobs done, the garden is then, you know, it's looking after itself. It's getting rained on and I can have a few days away from it to do other things. Um, got a few things coming up because of my birthday actually by the time you see this it probably will have been and gone but there we go yeah so oh rambling waffling now shut up Vivi yeah happy long day Epsom salts bath tonight for definite and then back tomorrow to do yeah some more fun stuff in the garden so I hope you'll join me then in the meantime Look after yourselves and happy gardening or happy not gardening if you're doing something else that you're happy whilst you're doing it. That's what matters, isn't it? Whatever you're up to, be happy doing it if you can be. See you soon, everyone. Cheerio.